And I'm Mike Bradley. And I'm Michelle Babbitt. We're at Hoover Dam tonight, and in just a moment, we're going to go inside the dam because we've got a really powerful story for you. Yes, we do. Hydroelectric power is very powerful. Nuclear fission, of course, is very controversial. Oil is getting more expensive all the time. Tonight on PM Magazine, we're going to meet a man who says that someday in the near future, we may not need any of those things. Organic power from lightning. He's going to talk to us about it on tonight's PM Magazine. But today, in the not-too-far future, when we won't need hydroelectric or nuclear power plants, we won't need coal, we won't even need oil, all the energy we need from nature in the form of lightning. In primitive cultures, static electricity was thought to be the work of the devil. Years later, we may think our monthly power bill is Satan's work, but there's no question we are totally dependent from our hot water heaters to our cars on modern energy. Dan Perkins first became intrigued with electricity as a child here in Las Vegas. This is Dan's child, an electric coil conductor, the first major step towards what Dan feels is energy of the future. The conception is that, you know, you're going to be electrocuted if you're near it. Um, the biggest problem and misconception about it is that it's, it's a terribly dangerous type of situation. Uh, most people, on the other hand, they don't respect it. Uh, they think, oh, it's just 110, uh, it's not going to hurt me. Uh, in fact, when 110 has killed more people than any form of electricity in the world. And the most common form of electricity is natural, lightning. Lightning strikes somewhere on the Earth a thousand times each second. If we could possibly harness that natural energy... And this is where it starts to get interesting. Have you ever heard of Nikola Tesla? Well, we're all familiar with names like Einstein and Edison, but Tesla probably doesn't ring a bell. Around the turn of the century, Tesla was considered to be a genius for his discoveries in electrical engineering, alternating current, and the wireless transmission of electrical power through the Earth. Now, think about that for a moment. If those theories could be applied, we wouldn't need electrical power plants, we wouldn't need nuclear power plants, we wouldn't even need coal mills. Organic power for next to nothing. Dan's lightning coil is a basic application of Tesla's theories. I started reading about Thomas Edison, and then I got a book that was called The Inventors Behind the Inventor. And I heard of a man named Tesla. And when I started studying the man, I realized that all of our modern inventions we have today are really based upon him. He gave us alternating current. He's the first person who conquered Niagara Falls, who gave us the whole thing. We wouldn't have television. We wouldn't have radio, which the scientific world is now giving Tesla the honor for radio and TV, radar, x-rays, uh, magnetic field flux and measurements are given to Tesla. Tesla was about 200 years ahead of his time. For years, Tesla sought to prove his theory that natural energy, lightning, could be stored and transmitted without wires to any spot in the world. He constructed a huge transmitting tower on Long Island at a cost of over $200,000. But last minute financial troubles halted the project and the tower was destroyed by civil authorities. They said the structure was unsafe. That's the official version. Dan has another. And just before the war broke out, uh, his giant tower on Long Island, which was to be his magnifying transmitter to really prove to the world that he could do this, they dynamited it. They, they tore it down with bulldozers. They were afraid because of his, um, and this is what really hurt him so bad, because of his European connection, they were afraid that maybe he was doing something with the Germans. That was in 1915, 67 years ago. And if you're thinking that, well, if Tesla was correct, and if it was all that simple, why wasn't more research done on wireless energy? Well, there's actually a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the backer of Tesla was uh, J.P. Morgan. Uh, he also worked with Westinghouse. Mm -hmm. uh, Westinghouse really wanted to help him, and Tesla had to tear up a $12 million contract that Westinghouse owed him in order to fight against, uh, for DC current rather than AC. Uh, when they found that Tesla could transmit electrical energy throughout the world without any wires, at no cost, there was no money to be made. Are you telling me that right now we could have wireless electricity that would be, uh, if not inexpensive, at least very, very cheap? Absolutely. Absolutely. There would be some cost because, you, you know, the, the power concerns today would have to be able to control the amount of current going through. They would probably have to build the coils, uh, monitor them. What you'd have, you'd have several central coils throughout the United States, and each home would have a smaller coil without any arcing or electricity at all because it's in a frequency wave to the ground. And the coil in your house would act as a receiver to the main coils going off around the world. And hence, all your energy would come off of this coil. Now, you're talking about being virtually energy independent. Absolutely. That's how important Tesla's theories could be. 
but even Dan realizes the changes, when they come, must come gradually. Well, Tesla was talking about using and harnessing the magnetic fields, and that was his whole theory behind even the study of these coils, was that everything worked off a magnetic field. And in theory, this is how the coil works. But he gave an example of an automobile that had no tires that would float off the ground three feet above the ground uh, with its own magnetic field around it. It couldn't run into anything. So there could be no two cars hitting one another uh, or hitting a tree or anything else or even a person. Uh, it would be pennies to run. Uh, the problem with something like that, if it were to come right out into the open today, it, it would be devastating to the world economy. Uh, you're putting so many people out of work. Insurance companies, for instance. You don't have to have insurance, but there's not going to be any accidents. Uh, the automobile industry as a whole, the steel workers, uh, the people who make the roads, uh, it just, you've destroyed the economy right there. You've put millions of people out of work. And the fact is, we can't afford to put millions on the unemployment rolls. But can we afford nuclear waste, polluted air and water, an oil war in the Middle East? It's the only way to go if they're going to really study. They have to study nature. I mean, lightning, I mean, we put off a 20-foot lightning bolt. And, and it's just, it's like a match compared to uh, a giant torch, what Mother Nature can do. Even our atomic bombs, you know, a 50 kiloton bomb is nothing compared to like Mount St. Helens, which was a small eruption. Uh, there's tremendous forces in nature that man needs to study. He needs to really get back to nature to understand science. And that's the only way we're going to achieve our goal and have a free energy system. Even though Tesla was considered a genius, you're probably wondering why his theories weren't taken more seriously. One big problem, Dan told me, was the man himself. He was an eccentric. He would take seven or eight showers a day, and he was so dedicated to his theories and his work that he completely removed himself from all frivolous activity, including dinner parties, dances, concerts, even sex. Michelle and I will be right back with more PM Magazine.